Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore how to cook in cleaner, faster, cheaper ways, while at the same time increasing family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience as they shape up their shambas on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Today, we are going to learn more about feeding our cows. Keeping your dairy cows fed all year round can be quite a challenge for most farmers. And so today, we are going to see how to ensure your cows are well fed all year round with good fodder. Key to getting more milk is to feed your cow quality grasses that have a lot of nutrients. Farmers are now growing their fodder like Joseph Kimathi. But we want to help Joseph do it right and get more milk from his cows. So, we have invited Frederick Muthomi, a specialist in forage crops from SEAT, the International Center for Tropical Agriculture, to give us advice. Joseph grows panicum, bracaria, and napier for his cows. In this area, panicum grows well. In other areas, Bracaria or Napier might be better choices. This is Panicum Mombasa. Mm. You can only tell the difference between a Bracaria and a Panicum just by looking at it physically. You realize that with the Panicum, the leaves are quite strong. Mm. Yeah, and even the its stem is quite succulent compared mm. to Bracaria. And Panicum also is able to grow taller. Uh, it has a, an average of between one and a half, and it can grow up to a maximum of two and a half meters. Is it good for silage? You can make silage out of it. Aha. Yeah. And, and when I look around, I'm seeing another kind of uh, mm. fodder. Which one is that? One of the fodder varieties that all farmers know, the nipia grass. And now it's time to return to the cow shed and find out how to keep nutrients in your cow feed by making silage. So you are preserving this side inch, first of all, to have a nutritious feed for the animals. Second thing is that you want to give the crop that is in the field time to regrow. Mm -hmm. So the farmer is maximizing on making more cuts per year and also preserving quality for inch. What are the main ingredients of making silage? So here you can see we have our materials really chopped. Sizes of one inch. We need molasses. Mm -hmm. This is to enhance fermentation. You need to learn our tube and make sure that it will be healthy. Because in silage, you have to make sure that no hair is around him or water. Mm -hmm. Turn it inside out for the sand that you have tied yes. to be on the inner side. That's good for me. You need to feed enough material over here. So it will be a ratio of two sacks, then molasses. Make sure that your material is well compacted. Yeah. And then we need to add the first layer of molasses. Yeah, so here we are mixing the ratio of molasses to water. That's one liter of molasses to three liters of water because our molasses is quite thick. Yeah, so make sure your solution has been added uniformly around the tube. So after that, now we need to compact to exceed the air. Make sure that you compact nicely. So let's recap. The tube's maximum capacity is 600 kilos. Joseph fills it with two 70 kilogram sacks of chopped grass and then adds a mixture of three parts water to one part molasses. He repeats until the bag is full. The molasses helps with the fermentation process. But remember, store bags off the ground away from pests. You have to seal the upper part mm -hmm. so that the process of fermentation will go on and your syringe will be in about 21 days. If it remains tightly sealed as it is, it can go up to even five years. Nice work, Tony. 
but growing fodder crops does not have to take away space from other crops. Now, we are here in Disterio's farm. Part of it is very sloppy, and when it rains, topsoil is washed away. Soil erosion harms soil fertility and leads to less yields. We've invited Isaac Ogutu to see how he can help. He's representing SIAT, the International Center for Tropical Agriculture. The cereal. Yes. What have you been planting on this particular piece? I was planting here Napier grass. Did it have any problems? Yes. It is not growing, it's changing color. Mm -hmm. So that's why we decided to approve it. We recommend farmers to plant Bracaria. Cayman will be ideal for the stereo mm. because it has a good root system that is able to hold the soil. It will be able to help you stop erosion. Yes. Another thing, you are going to get more grasses from your farm because the grass does well and it uh, withstands uh, diseases. Yes. Isaac suggests planting Bracaria. The Mulatto too, Cayman and Cobra varieties are all good choices. So is Panicum grass. All these varieties have deep roots that can hold the soil. But Mulatto too is also resistant to stunt disease, which affects Napier in this area. If the farm is sloping down, yes. you plant across mm -hmm. so that when water is moving, it gets something to stop it. Mm -hmm. To be able to do this, yes. we show farmers how to locate contours mm -hmm. on their slopes. What, what exactly is that? Contours are level lines uh, mm -hmm. uh, on a slope. And those are the lines that we follow mm -hmm. when we are planting our grasses. To be able to know uh, where those lines uh, follow, mm -hmm. we use an airframe. A contour is a line across a sloping field all at the same height. You can use it to plant crops evenly across a sloppy field or to make terraces. To find this level land, you need to build an A-frame. To do this, you need two poles for the side, each two meters long and a center pole one and a half meters wide. Fix them together to form an A-shape. Next, you need to tie a string at the top of the frame with a weight like a stone at the bottom. Cut a mark to show the middle of the frame. This mark will help line up the string and show the frame is level. Right now, our A-frame is made. Let's see how we can use it to find the contour. This is the point mm -hmm. where we want to start making our line okay. uh, from. So, first thing uh, mm -hmm. is to mark where our line is going to start from. Mm -hmm. yes. Mark the starting point with a stick. Then move the A-frame and find the level land. Do this by moving the end of the frame until the red center line meets the mark in the middle of the frame. Once they line up, mark the end of the frame with another stick and repeat all the way across the field. Once this is done, we are ready to plant the Bracaria. So we will need the splits, then we will need a rope to help us have straight lines. Mm -hmm. okay. Remember, when you plant with the manure, the grass thrives better. So, so what uh, do we, we do take first? Our rope. Uh -huh. You put it here. here first. The next one, you will take it to the last stick. Uh -huh. Now we make our holes. Oh. Our holes are going to be 30 centimeters apart. Large. You take a handful of manure, manure yes. for every hole. For every hole. Okay. Okay. So when planting the splits, you put a hole split in one hole. Okay. okay. Put in here and press. Eh? Mm -hmm. okay. This is mine. And you press. And press. Mm. When you plant and then you put some water, you are, they are going to pick very fast compared to seeds because mm. it has already established roots. After a few days, yes. it is going to cover the entire area, mm. so there will be no gap in uh, between. In between. It's gonna look it's good. Looks nice. It's gonna look good. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We have seen how growing your own fodder can save you money and also keep your cows productive. But fodder grasses don't have to compete for space with your other crops. You can grow them on slopes and boundaries on your farm. And now we are at Priska's farm. She's disappointed with her daily cows. She has two milking cows and one heifer. But her milk production is very low. I wonder if the low production has something to do with the feeding of the cows. Let's find out. We have invited Solomon, an expert from Seat. 
it can explain to the family how important certain plants can be for both feeding cows and for the shamba. Solomon? Yes. We had a look at the feeding plant of yeah. the cows, Priska's cows, and she says mostly she feeds them on napier grass. And this sure. is the napier. Sure. What's, what's your observation? What are your thoughts? Yeah, quickly, what I thought, uh, she might be missing some of the things because okay. you cannot just feed your animals on napier grass alone. All right. And to begin with, if you look at this napier, it's not that green. It should be really green to mean that it has more of nutrients, especially the protein. All right. If you look at that portion, yes. it's overgrown. And literally, for her to be able to feed properly to the animal, they should be harvested at about one, well, three feet. And the best way to tell three feet is like waist high. Oh, at the waist. At the waist. Okay. So past that age, the napier is deteriorating or becoming poor in terms of the, benef the benefits you would want the animal to get from this napier. Uh -huh. Every time you are harvesting your napier, uh -huh. you are actually mining from the soils. Uh -huh. And if you don't get uh, the nutrients back, uh -huh. you'll keep getting reduced yields for uh -huh. your animals and not enough for your uh -huh. cows. Uh -huh. So one of the key things you should do, if you look at uh, this portion which you have harvested, yes. you should be able to come, uh -huh. make some uh, narrow furrows in between the, your napier, uh -huh. put your manure uh -huh. and cover it. I know most of the farmers, what they do, after weeding their napier, yes. they just come and sprinkle the manure on top. Yes. By doing that, you actually lose what you want to go, the, ben, uh, the napier to benefit from. Uh -huh. The okay. nitrogen goes to the air, uh -huh. but it should be taken up by the, the roots. That's okay. why you are putting it where the roots can access. What is the other option of managing when I have surplus of it? For napier, what you can do is to make silage. Uh -huh. And it can stay until when you have a need. All right, just, just as, as a Rika Priska, you said you only feed them the napier grass the napier grass mm -hmm. and the normal grass. Solomon, is that the right way of managing our cows? There are quite a number of developed and improved forages and grasses for that matter mm -hmm. that she can utilize uh, to be able to feed her animals properly. And we, one of the categories we have is what we call bracaria. Mm -hmm. And bracaria has quite a number of uh, hybrids and as well as cultivars. Mm -hmm. And if she is able to plant as well on her farm, which they can grow here, she will be able to improve her feeding because they are more nutritious the animal can easily digest them in the stomach and turn that into the milk and for those who feed uh, for beef, for meat. Right. There are also legumes, eh? because I've looked at her farm, yes. she only gives one type of food which gives more of energy. But she needs to balance and also make sure she can uh, generate some protein from her farm. Mm -hmm. And a good example is like sun hemp or crotralia, there is desmodium, and they can also easily grow and be able to reduce her cost on daily meal and the animals will have gotten what they need in terms of milk production. All right. Yep. Growing fodder crops for your cattle reduces expenses for buying concentrate feeds and provides your animals with adequate nutrients. Bracaria grass has proved to be a better alternative animal feed that has a higher crude protein and energy content and is also easily digested compared to napier grass. Here is how to plant it. Prepare a good seed bed. The soil has to be mixed thoroughly with well rotten manure. You can either use seeds, root splits, or stem cuttings as planting materials. For seeds, plant at the beginning of rains. Create one to two centimeter deep furrows and 50 centimeters spacing. Drill the seeds and cover lightly with soil. You can also sow the seed in a nursery bed and transplant the seedlings after six weeks. Ensure you mulch the nursery bed with dry grass. The grass takes 21 weeks or five months to flower after sowing. This is the best time to start feeding the livestock. Our next farmers, Peter and Ruth, are doing a good job with their cows. They follow best farming practice. But do they have all it takes for their cows to produce more milk? So, he has also called his neighbors to hear what Shamba Shape Up is going to share with him. What a farmer! Peter, what do you usually feed your cows on? I normally or usually you feed my dairy cows with navy grass and uh, pomerots. Mm -hmm. At uh, times I can use uh, green maize. Evelyn, you've heard from the farmer. What else should a farmer feed his cows on? Cows require protein. For Peter to give a protein to his cows, he needs to feed uh, them with the, for the shrub, 
known as Kaliandra. We normally encourage farmers to raise the seeds in a nursery before planting out on their farms. There are various areas where you can plant your Kaliandra so that uh, you don't uh, occupy space that is meant for your crops. You can plant your Kaliandra along uh, soil conservation structures. Some of you have uh, terraces, you can plant them Kaliandra along the terraces. Uh, you can also plant uh, Kaliandra along uh, internal and external boundaries on your farm. If you have uh, Napier, you can also mix Kaliandra with Napier. What we recommend that uh, if you decide to mix Kaliandra with Napier, you plant one row of Kaliandra followed by two rows of uh, Napier. For the shrubs are not difficult to grow and don't have to compete with your crops for space. You can grow these shrubs along the boundaries in your shamba. If your farm is on a slope, you can grow the shrubs along the edges of your terraces to hold the terraces together. This helps to stop soil erosion, protect watersheds, and give you firewood. How long does it take to grow? Kaliandra seed has a very hard seed coat. And in order to increase the germination, it's very, very important that you soak the seeds in uh, water for two days or 48 hours so that you can soften the seed coat. The same way you soak uh, beans when you want to cook them. But uh, Kaliandra uh, seeds are soaked much longer than the beans. Once the seed coat is softened, then you can sow your Kaliandra seeds immediately. When you sow Kaliandra seeds in the nursery, it takes about four months before it is ready for planting on your farm. So before you even uh, establish your nursery, it is very, very important to plan so that uh, when the Kaliandra seedlings are ready, the rains are also available. We normally recommend that uh, a farmer plants 500 Kaliandra per cow. If you have one cow, you plant 500 Kaliandra. If you have two cows, you plant 1,000. The 500 Kaliandra shrubs will be able to take you a whole year. And uh, you can be cutting for several years without Kaliandra drying up. Now, after planting this Kaliandra, how can I manage? Will I leave it to get to its height or I can prune it? Kaliandra has many uses. But as a farmer, if you choose to grow Kaliandra for livestock, as a fodder, you have to cut it at uh, a certain height above ground, maybe 0 0.5 meters. So you can maintain it at this height from the ground. You don't have to let it to grow into a big tree. What is the importance of doing that? The importance of uh, cutting it back is for it to increase the herbage, the foliage. Because if you let it grow into a tall tree, the amount of biomass that it produces is not much. And also, there's also the danger of falling if you have to climb a tree. But if you maintain it at that height, it's easier to manage. Ah, now I think it's good if we go to the nursery and show us how to plant. <coughs> Kaliandra seeds have a hard coat, so they will take a long time to germinate if you do not treat them. To treat the seeds, you need to soak them for two days in water. When most of the seeds have swollen, they can be planted. Plant the seeds straight after you have soaked them. And remember, do not boil the seeds. When you make a nursery bed, make sure you'll be able to water it every day. First, lay a sheet of plastic one meter wide onto the ground where you want to make the nursery bed. This will stop the seedlings' roots going too deep into the soil. Then, make a raised seed bed 10 to 15 centimeters high and then level the soil. The seed bed should be one meter or three feet wide. Support the sides of the bed with materials like banana stems, timber or stones and prop them firmly with wooden pegs or stones. Make furrows 10 centimeters apart and two centimeters deep. In the prepared furrows, plant two seeds in each space with five centimeters between each set of seeds. You can use a stick cut to five centimeters to measure each space. Mm -hmm. 
Then cover the seeds lightly with soil. Cover the nursery bed with mulch. Water the seed bed every day. After the seeds sprout, take away the mulch and make a raised shade over the seed bed to protect the seedlings. Transplant the seedlings after four months when they are about one foot tall. To transplant seedlings, remember to take off the plastic before planting if you have grown them in bags. Always transplant seedlings with some soil attached to their roots. This will help them to survive. Plant seedlings in one line, 50 centimeters apart. Plant the seedlings upright in their holes and fill the space around them with a mixture of topsoil and manure. Step on the soil around the seedling to make the seedling firm. Water the seedlings every day to make sure they all live. And that was not all. Evelyn, our fodder expert, decided to take us to a very successful dairy farmer nearby who was using Kaliandra for her cows. We have come to meet Rose, who has been farming cows and growing Kaliandra for a number of years. So Rose, how long have you been farming? I've been farming for the last uh, 10 years. Yes. But uh, I was farming the ordinary way, our way, Kalenjin way. You know, as Kalenjins, we keep cows. So for the last, now, six years is when I've known uh, the techniques of uh, farming, especially in dairy. Rose explains to us why she grows Kaliandra for her cows. Now, after feeding your cows the uh, Kaliandra, is there any change and improvement? Yes, there is a uh, great change. How? Because uh, the milk pro production has increased uh, drastically. So you would encourage farmers to grow Kaliandra? Yes. Good. Yes. So our farmers, any questions? What are the advantages of growing this uh, Kaliandra in your farm? Kaliandra is good for environment, conservation, and also for um, our cows. Because um, without protein feeds in our cows, we cannot produce the right um, kilos of milk. Since I, I started using, I've seen the difference. I want to ask uh, Rose, uh, when he, she harvests this Kaliandra, how do you give to your cows? I harvest uh, a day earlier and then I leave to wilt. The following day now I, I mix with the, the, the feeds and then I, I, I give to the cow. Evelyn, so the most important thing is to keep them to wilt yes. for a day. Yes. Okay. When you harvest them, are you going to make into pieces or you just give? Yes, I try to have a shaft cutter. I cut with the shaft cutter. Earlier on, I was using a punk before I, I, I got the, the shaft cutter. What are some of the management practices that you normally carry on on your Kaliandra? The management of Kaliandra is so easy. At times, there is a grass coming inside the Kaliandra. The time I cut, I can blow. Suppose you have excess of uh, this Kaliandra, which exceeds the, the number of animals that you have. How do you normally uh, preserve for future use? I cut at once, and then I take to a shed to keep them dry, and then I keep them in the in the box for future use. It can stay even over three months. I think now, Rose, you need to show us how to prune the Kaliandra. Okay. Good. I can show you. Okay. Kaliandra is a good source of protein for your cows, goats, and sheep. You will need about 500 shrubs to feed one cow throughout the year. Kaliandra is ready to harvest 9 to 12 months after planting. It is possible to have 4 to 6 harvests per year. To harvest, cut leaves and young branches when they are about 5 feet long. The leaves should be dried under shade for one day and then mixed with other fodder like napier grass and then fed to the animals. After about 12 years, you should dig up the plants and plant new seedlings. Wow, we've learned so much here in Bomet with Peter and Ruth. Their cows are doing so well. Their milk production is way, way up. And now, it should go up even more if they start using Kaliandra. Do you know you don't have to have a cow to grow fodder? And next, this is Ruth Atiendo from Seat. 
the International Center for Tropical Agriculture. She's going to explain how planting fodder grasses like Pracaria can be a really good business if you plant as a cash crop. And just wait until you find out how much profit you can make. So Ruth, what do you have for us today? Okay, so today I wanted to talk uh, about forage as a business. Mm -hmm. yes. Not only that when you plant it, you, you feed it to your livestock, but we encourage farmers to preserve these grasses. For example, mm -hmm. during rainy season when you have plenty of it, you store it, then you can use it during dry season. Mm -hmm. Yes. You mm -hmm. can also sell it. But is selling hay a profitable business? Now, let's find out. You have one acre of land, yes. you want to plant your grass. Mm. So what you do, you need to know how many kgs of seed will you need to plant that one acre. Yes. After that, you need to know how much is the cost of the fertilizer that you are going to use. So for one acre of grass, you will need two kilograms of seeds costing around 8,000 shillings. A 50 kilogram bag of planting fertilizer like DAP at 3,000 shillings and a 50 kilogram bag of top dressing fertilizer like urea at 2,500 shillings. And then we still have labor. Hmm. Where do you get your labor from? From the neighbors. You pay them? Yeah. How yeah. much per day? Around 200 per day. Hmm. 200 shillings per day? Hmm. How many oh, people? Yeah. Six people. Six people? That is 1,200 shillings. Yes. yes. And then weeding one acre, how many people for one day? That is 2,000. We do use 2,000. So let's add labor to our expenses. Planting labor is 1,200 shillings and weeding labor is 2,000 shillings. What's next? During harvest, how do you do it? We hire people. One acre harvesting will cost how much? 1,200. 1,200? Yes. So add the harvesting labor of 1,200 shillings and our total expenses from planting to harvesting comes to 17,900 shillings. Now, let's see how much profit the Scouties will get. Mm. So from one acre, you can get 133 bells from one, one acre. 133. Yes. yes. And remember the harvest is after every two months. Two months. And the price for Cayman, standard bell is 15 kgs. Mm -hmm. It weighs 15 kg. Yes. You sell at 350 shillings. 350. Wow. Each. Yes. Each bell. So, if one bell is 350 shillings and the Scouties harvest 133 bells from their one acre, then they will get 46,550 shillings from the sale. But remember, they have the expenses of 17,900 shillings. So our profit is 28,650. Wow. Oh. That is what you'll be getting after every, every cut. Every cut. So that's after every two months. After yeah, every after two, two months. months. Wow. Yes. But that's not all. Once planted, the grass can stay up to eight years in the farm, depending on the management. So, for the following harvest, the Scouties won't have any planting costs. They'll still have to top dress and pay labor. But with that in mind, they can expect 40,000 Kenya shillings profit every two months. Hmm, not bad. So Ruth, are there any other ways of uh, making money from grasses other than turning them into hay? Yes, there is. Mm. These grasses are actually on high demand mm. Mm. and the seeds are very expensive. Yes. So you find that there are farmers who have ventured into selling the splits. So you grow your one acre, then when they are ready for transplant, you sell them as seedlings mm -hmm. to other farmers. And from one acre, you can get between 32,000 to 34,000 seedlings. We can use at least a rate of three shillings per, per, per seedling. Per seedling. Yeah. According to Ruth's calculations, the Scouties could make over 85,000 shillings in profit from selling their Bracaria splits. Can I get a rate market? Yes, Mr. Scout. Yes. There is actually high demand for grasses. There is a group doing it somewhere near Busia area. Mm. They have a client that is coming all the way from Machakos mm. with a lorry to come and to pick. Come and, oh, yes. And pick. Why? Who knew growing grass could be such a good business? Remember, get in touch with iShamba for more information on 0711082606. See you next week on Shamba Shape Up.
Thank you.